Hey there everyone, it's Elmarie here, call sign KJ5LXP. For today's video, I wanted to take you all through setting up your first Meshtastic node. What is Meshtastic? Meshtastic is a mesh network of many different nodes all connected to each other all at once. The more nodes you connect to, the bigger your mesh becomes. And as your mesh becomes bigger, the more people that you can be able to connect with via your node. So imagine you're out hiking, you have no cell service, there's no Wi-Fi, you have your radio, but there aren't any repeaters around. What's the best way to contact someone? Meshtastic fills in that answer. Meshtastic allows you to send text messages to the nodes that you have been connected to. So the more nodes that you can connect to, the more outreach you have. What's so great about Meshtastic is that it's a open source project for anyone who wants to set up one. It's very straightforward and very beginner friendly, which I will take you through setting up your first node, but more about Meshtastic. Meshtastic is an open source project that lets you send text messages and GPS data over little radios like these. This here is a Helltech V3. It's basically an ESP32 board along with a LoRa board or a LoRa chip. I don't know too much about the electronic details there. Basically, this little radio will allow me to talk to people all over when I'm connected to them. Think of it as a digital walkie-talkie, but for texting. Your messages will hop to one node to the next and the next as you continue to rack up more nodes and creates a mesh network. That means more people using Meshtastic, the further your messages can travel. It's free, it's community driven, perfect for off-grid adventures and great for nerding out with your friends. Now, to get started, you're first gonna need a Meshtastic compatible board. Don't worry, there's so many different options out there. It cost me about 20 bucks. But first, you're gonna need your compatible board. You're gonna need your USB data cable that connects to the board. Make sure it's also not just charge only, make sure you're able to send data through this cord. We're gonna be flashing firmware onto your board. When you have those two items, then you're gonna make sure you want to download the Meshtastic app on your phone. The app will allow you to connect to the device via Bluetooth. But as you explore into the hobby just a little bit more, there are so many different customizable things that you can do with your Meshtastic node. One of the most interesting things about Meshtastic is that you do not necessarily need a radio license in order to operate your node. Now, if you want to access certain frequencies for your node connection, then yes, you're going to need at least a radio operator technician license for your node. But right off the box, you do not need your license, which makes Meshtastic so accessible to so many different people around the world. So yeah, no license needed. I encourage you to get your license because it's gonna open up way more possibilities with the technician license under your belt. And without further ado, let's start setting up our first Meshtastic node. To get started, you first wanna make sure your antenna is attached to your board. Meshtastic makes this a requirement because if you power on your device without the antenna, you may damage your board. When I plug in the device, nothing appears on my device because I've already erased the initial firmware on there, but for new devices, it should display Helltech if you have the Helltech V3 like I do. So don't worry if your board looks different than mine. You first want to go to the Meshtastic website. From here, you then want to select Get Started. You'll see some initial information about different hardware, but our board is an ESP32 specific board, so we're going to be following following the ESP32 instructions. We'll go to install serial drivers. Again, I have an ESP32 type board and you wanna make sure that you have this driver installed. And when you do, it should look like this under your device manager. Silicon Labs CP2110X USB to UART Bridge COM4. If you don't have this installed, you won't, you won't be able to flash the firmware, so make sure you install that driver because I had issues because I didn't install the driver first. Also, forewarning, here, I think it says it here. Stop. Make sure you never power the radio without attaching the antenna as doing so could damage the radio chip. Maybe I should have stated this earlier, but please, please make sure that you attach the antenna first before powering on your little board. Anyways, moving on now. So you wanna install that uh, ESP32 driver. I just installed this top one here and I had no issues afterwards. Now let's get into flashing firmware. Again, I have the ESP32 device, so we're gonna select this one. From here, it Meshtastic gives you different methods of installing for the firmware. The best method and the method I use was flashing it via Chrome or Edge. There is a way to do it via the command line script, but the web flasher is so intuitive. You're, you're just wanna, gonna select that. So we select this link and then we're gonna visit the flasher website. Remember how I said there's so many different boards out there? Well, let me show you. This is 
all the boards that are compatible with Meshtastic. The range is outstanding, but yeah, you just pick your favorite one and off you go. I just went with the simple Heltec V3, so I'm going to select this as my board. From there, I'm going to be selecting the firmware option. I'm going to be choosing the most stable, up-to-date beta, so that's what I'm going to be selecting. And then you'll flash your firmware. But yeah, that's as simple as that. But if you really wanted to know how to flash a firmware under the CLI, here is a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do so. Make sure you have Python installed, as noted here. And here are all the steps and commands to run on the command line. Not too hard, but a little bit more tedious than just doing it via the web flasher. Apologies for a quick delay here. I had an issue with my microphone. Back where we left off, we were flashing the firmware. So once again, I am choosing my Heltec V3 here as my board, because that's the device that I have. I'm going to be selecting the most recent beta version that is stable. And now I will be flashing the firmware onto the device. So let's click flash. Here is what happened, uh, the device connection loss. I think that something happened with my cable. I think it got unplugged, but we're going to be rerunning this. I think I'm gonna actually refresh here. So let me do that. Let me hit refresh. Let's select our target device, most stable beta, flash. Yeah. Why can't I hit continue there in the bottom? There it is, continue. Full erase and install, at least for me, because my board has already been flashed with firmware before, I'm going to fully, fully erase it and install the firmware that I want. So I'm going to hit erase, flash, and install. Now I'm going to select my serial port here. Again, if you don't have the right driver, I don't think you're even be able to select this option. So make sure you have that driver installed. So I'm going to click here, click connect, should connect. Here we go, we're connecting and we've started erasing the board and now we're flashing the firmware. Again, it's gonna take about a minute to two minutes, so I'm gonna let this run and I will show you what the board will look, looks like when it's all complete. All right, the firmware's been flashed. There it is, mistastic.org. You're gonna see your device number there also, hold on, before I continue there, in order to enable Bluetooth for your phone, you're going to want to put in this code that is written here. So let's pull up Meshtastic right now on our phone. Oh, there's AM Radio Crash Course. Anyways, uh, let's uh, pull up Meshtastic on our phone. It's going to be reading that connection and it's going to prompt me... Well, it says available radios here, then I'm gonna select available radios. Now it's gonna prompt me that code number that is on the board right there. So 210547, this will enable Bluetooth pairing. After you've enabled the Bluetooth pairing, you're gonna now wanna set the LoRa region. I believe this is so that there's some regulations with the bands. We're gonna be in the US region. So click United States there. Now you can kind of preset your node right now. I'm gonna do okay to MQTT because this will allow me for future future projects. I'm gonna hit save at the bottom. Whoop, camera, camera cannot, there it goes. Let's hit save. Save config to mesh tactic 4068. Yes, oh, there it goes. The device is rebooting. My phone recognizes the, the node as it gives me notification. Now the device is fully rebooted. Here on my phone, we can see my new node. I'm gonna do a screen record of this because it's gonna be better than me bringing in my phone right here. So let me switch over to that. All right, here's the phone view. As you can see here, I have my node listed. It's factory, but let's do some changes there. Go to settings and go under user configuration. Select user, and from here, you can adjust the long name of the device and the short name. You can also activate your license privileges from there as well. Here are the other nodes that I'm connected to. I'm only connected to one other node and I don't think it's user operated because it just displays weather data and I've tried contacting them. I've sent a message to this node, but I didn't get a response back. Here, let me show you. If you navigate over to messages, this is where you can directly contact other nodes. As you see here, I've contacted this node a couple times before. Because I've gotten no response, this just solidifies my thoughts that this is only a weather station node. Because I can't message someone right now, let's configure our board. I look to customize my board's long name, short name, and then I will also add my call sign.
While you can also set up these configurations on your phone, you can also use the Python command line interface as another way to interact with your node. These are all the many different command line commands that you can use to interact and program your node with. I'm really excited to get started with all of this. So you saw there that I was able to set the owner node and set the sh short name there. You can also do that here in the command line interface by using these commands. So set owner, set owner, owner or set owner short. And in order to enable the is license feature, you need to be able to use the set ham and then you use your call sign here and it's set the license ham ID and turn off encryption. So many different uses here in the command line. Many people may be hesitant towards this avenue, though I just wanted to let you all know that this is one way to program your node. For example, let's send a, a text message. We'll use meshtastic dash dash, dash send text testing. We've connected to the radio and we've sent the text message to all the channels. Let's see if there's another one. Well, a quick good one is a meshtastic reboot. In case you need to reboot your device, you can easily do that here. So reboot. And now my device is rebooting. So great way to control your node while it's connected without using your phone. What's also super cool is there is a web um, client here. So let's click on the web client and let's go check it out. So let's open this link. Let's do a new connection. Let's do serial because my device is already in the computer. So let's click on this and there we go. We've got my node here and we can use our laptop for communications through our node. Either way, there's a web client for your Meshtastic node as well, in case you didn't know. And there you have it, everyone. That's how you set up your first Meshtastic node. It's super simple and easy and anyone can really do it. I'm definitely looking forward to the many different projects that I hope to do with my board. I've already ordered a couple more boards to be able to experiment with something, but I wanna hear what you've done with your nodes. There's so many different possibilities. And once again, you do not need a amateur license to create your own node, it will give you more possibilities. I really hope all of you get creative with your node and I wanna see the top node. I wanna know how many nodes you have connected to. Right now I only have two, so if you know anyone in the Dallas area that has these nodes, please let me know so I can get connected with them. But I wanna see the person with the most amount of nodes in the comment section. So definitely leave a comment and tell me how many nodes that you have connected. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This is KJ5LXP. Bye.